Okay, let's talk about how to multiply these fractions. And in general, we're going to be discussing here just how to multiply uh, any fractions. But we'll go ahead and use this as an example. And uh, there's a couple very important um, uh, concepts that I want to highlight because multiplying fractions is very easy. But there's some other things that are kind of going on. And we need to be kind of thinking about other related concepts when we're multiplying fractions. Okay, so in math, Things that are easy are also kind of easy to mess up. And, um, you know, multiplying fractions is absolutely essential, not only in a uh, basic arithmetic, basic fractions, but in algebra and beyond. Okay. So we're going to get into all this in a second. But first, let me go in and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tab of Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best uh, most powerful online math uh, programs there is. So whether you need to take a full math course or need assistance in your current math uh, uh, course, my program can help you. So I offer very comprehensive, full, complete uh, video-based lessons, and I literally solve thousands of problems in my program. So nothing's more first, uh, frustrating to students to uh, you know do a bunch of problems, get an answer, you know have the answer key, but not know how that um, uh, actual problem, how the solution was actually derived, right? So that's frustrating. That's why in my program, it's taken me years and years to literally solve, you know, have videos to s teach you how to solve thousands of problems, okay? So anyways, I'll let you be the judge if the uh, whether you think this program can help you out. I know it definitely can, but I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. But one thing that I definitely know that you need to be doing is be taking outstanding math notes. So after decades of teaching math, there's one thing that I certainly believe the most, and that is those students who take great math notes typically have great math grades, okay? And the reverse is true. Those students that have no math notes or sloppy math notes, or they sometimes take notes and then they take a break and are like, yeah, I might, you know, they'll take notes or they copy notes or they're just kind of all over the place. Well, if that's you, you know, that's a lot of students, okay? So if that's your situation, Okay, don't beat yourself up, but you've got to correct that, okay? Really focus on taking great math notes. That's going to pay off big time in your uh, math education. But in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I actually offer very detailed, comprehensive math notes. You can find the link to those in the description of this video, but those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. Okay, so let's get into multiplying fractions, and we'll use this... Uh, three-fifths times 10 over 6 as our example problem. This is a really easy problem, but, um, you know, well, if you understand this, you can handle any problem, right? So, first of all, what do we do to uh, multiply fractions? Well, we have a fraction multiplied by another fraction. And what I'm going to tell you here, it, this is just one fraction multiplied by another fraction. This is two fractions, but this would apply if we had like three, four, or five fractions all being multiplied by one another. All we need to do is multiply the numerators. Okay, if you don't know that the top number in a fraction is called the numerator, the bottom number is called the denominator. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerators together and the respective denominators together. It's literally just multiplying across. So here, we're going to um, have 3 times 10. All right, we'll write it all out. And then 5 times 6, 5 times 6. And this is the setup, okay? Numerator times numerator. And here, if we had three fractions, it would be numerator times numerator times numerator. You get the idea, okay? And then denominator times denominator. So 3 times 10, of course, is 30. 5 times 6 is 30. 30 divided by 30 is 1. Okay, so super easy problem. Now, remember, when you're multiplying fractions uh, and you have an answer, okay, whatever your product is, always look to reduce and simplify. Okay, so I have some other videos on that, but we're going to actually kind of touch on this here in a second. Now, another way to be thinking about multiplying uh, fractions, okay, again, here, you're going to be using the same technique, but oftentimes when you get good at this, you're going to want to be thinking about some other things. Now, now what we're going to want to do here is cross-cancel. So some of you are out there going, oh, three, what we talk about cross-cancelization. Cross okay, so here's probably what you were thinking. 
you're like, oh, three goes into six, uh, two, okay. Three goes into six, two, and five goes into 10, two, okay. So this is this kind of concept of um, cross cancelization, right? Now, I'm going to kind of get into that in a second, right? You're like, okay, three goes into six, five goes into 10. Can't we do that? Yes, we can. But this is what's really going on here. So what, we're, we, what we have, we have, um, it's still numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator, but we're going to write these numbers. We're going to write these in terms of their factors, okay? So three times 10 is the same thing as three times 10 is the same thing as uh, five times two. Okay, so this is the same thing as 3 times 10, right? So there's our 3, and here is our 10. Now, our uh, denominator is going to be 5 times 6, but let's write this in terms of its uh, factors. So 6 we can write as 3 times 2, okay? All right, so now we are basically done the same thing here, but just writing all these numbers out in terms of their prime factors. Now, when we look here, we're like, whoa, we, there's something called cross-canceling. Uh, when you have uh, a fraction and, and um, the numerator and denominators, okay, these, these um, numbers up here are separated by multiplication, all right? These are factors. We can cross-cancel like factors. In other words, when I see a factor, the same number, the same factor, and it's, there's one of these in the numerator and one in the denominator, okay? I can cross cancel one to one. In other words, if I had a five up here, okay, I have a five and a five, and I have only have one five down here, I can cross cancel one factor for one factor. All right, so this five, I could cross cancel this five, okay, amongst the numerator and denominator. That's a lovely thing, but guess what? It's one to one. This this five here doesn't get to cross cancel this five. If I had another five in a denominator, then I could cross cancel again. Okay, so. We want to look for opportunities to cross cancel because it can, it's going to make our arithmetic easy here, right? So let's take a look at uh, what else can we do. We're like, all right, we were able to cross cancel the five. Can we, can we cross cancel any other factors? Well, I have a three and a three. Okay, they're like factors, so I can cross cancel these factors, and then I have a two and a two. I cross cancel them. So really, what's left up here when you when you cross cancel everything, there's always a one left. So that's just one over one or just one, okay? So when you're multiplying fractions, all right, you wanna look for opportunities for cross cancelization as well, okay? But still, the, tech, the technique or the procedure is still the denominator is being, uh, the respective denominators being multiplied by one another and the respective uh, numerators, okay? Now let's think of this problem in this manner, okay? Same problem. So here we have uh, three-fifths times 10 over six. Another thing that you want to be doing when you're dealing with fractions, okay, is right off the bat, always look to simplify your fraction. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, hmm, 10 over 6. Can I reduce this fraction? All right. So can I make this a little bit like a, an easier fraction to work with? Yes, I can. So let's rewrite this fraction as 3 fifths. Okay, whoops. That was a terrible 5. 3 fifths times. Now, how can I reduce this fraction, right? Well, 2 goes into 10 five times, and 2 goes into 6 three times, okay? So I can simplify or reduce this fraction into the fraction of 5 thirds, okay? So doing this problem, okay, is equivalent to doing this problem. So when I do this, now let's just think about it. I have common factors, 5 and 5 I could cross cancel, and 3 and 3 or I can just multiply across, okay? All right, so I have my numerators, that's three times five is 15. My denominators, five times three, that's 15. 15 divided by 15 is one. Okay, so, you know, uh, when we're talking about multiplying fractions, first off, you know, you need to just know the, the procedure, right? The respective numerators being multiplied by the respective denominators. But in addition to that, you wanna be thinking about uh, common factors, okay, cross-canceling common factors to make your life easier, and reducing fractions, okay, before you start to multiply. One more thing about uh, multiplying fractions, because I don't want to leave you without discussing this, is what if we had this fraction, 2 and 1 third, 
uh, multiply by, let's say, 1 and uh, 1, uh, let's make it a little bit different, uh, 1 and 2 fifths, okay? So these guys, these are mixed numbers, all right? So how do we multiply these type of fractions? Well, what we're going to do is change these mixed numbers into improper fractions. So how do we do that? Let's take 2 and 1 third, 2 and 1 third. So the procedure is, is we take this little uh, denominator, we multiply by the big number here, okay? So that's 3 times 2 is what? That's 6, right? 3 times 2 is 6. So we take that answer, then we add whatever number is up here. So 3 times 2 is 6. We're going to add whatever number is here. So 6 plus 1 is 7. I'm going to write that a little bit better. Okay. And then whatever our denominator was right here, it's 3. Okay. So let's just practice it again. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So this is 7 thirds. Okay. Now let's go ahead and have you practice this guy right here. Let's see if you can write this as a mixed number. So we'll do it over here, uh, 1 and 2 fifths, okay, so it's going to be 5, 5 times 1 is 5, okay, then we're going to add this number here, so that is going to be 5 plus 2 is 7, and then I have my little 5 here, 7 fifths. Now you'll get good at this, and maybe you already are now, so 5 times 1 is 5, uh, plus 2, that's 7 fifths, okay, now this is a multiplication problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to change are mixed number fractions. Now, here we have two mixed numbers. Uh, we're going to change them both into improper fractions. But if you only have one, you just change whatever mixed fractions you're working with. But you want to get them as proper or improper fractions, right? Just one numerator and one denominator. And then here, before I even start, I'm like, can I cross cancel anything? No, I can't. So I'm going to go ahead and just multiply the respective numerators and denominators. And these are all prime numbers. So this is going to be pretty easy. So 7 times 7 is 49 and then 3 times 5 is 15 and we are done okay now one last little um, suggestion when you do multiply fractions together whatever your answer is here okay we have an improper fraction meaning that the numerator is bigger than the denominator okay so if I have two-thirds that's a proper fraction because the numerator is smaller than a denominator so this is proper this is improper because the numerator is bigger than the denominators, meaning that you can um, turn this into you can turn this into a mixed number again. So what if I had this right here, five thirds, right? This is an improper fraction, but I could be like, well, let's just write this as this way. I'm going to go. Uh, um, this is five divided by three or five thirds. So let's go ahead and divide five by three. So that's one, right? Three goes into five, one. So one times three, uh, you got three and remainder two. So this is the same thing as one and two thirds, right? One and two thirds. Let's just double check that. Three times one, okay, is three plus two. Yes, this is the same thing as the improper fraction, five thirds. So if you have five thirds as your answer, don't do all of this to write this as one or two thirds. Don't do that. In other words, don't take 15 and divide it into 49 and do all this stuff. Just stop right here. Okay. Just as long as you have a simplified final answer, stop. Most of your math teachers will be happy with that because when you go through and change these, you have to know how to change this into a mixed number. But when you do this, oftentimes students get this wrong. I would see students who would get problems right, right, get the correct problem you know, the actual do it correctly, and then go ahead and, you know, uh, go through the steps to change this into a mixed number. Then they'd get the wrong answer. Then I would take some points off, and then they would do this, and then there would be tears and everything else, and it was just not a good situation. And I said, don't do this. This is perfectly fine. Then you went and did all this voluntarily. It takes more time, and they know things got bad. But anyways, if you listen to me in this video, you're going to do outstanding, and you're going to be just like this, okay? So anyways, basic math is not so basic. E stuff that seems to be easy oftentimes is where students make mistakes, okay? And I can just tell you right now, really, really learn and embrace all this arithmetic, you know, especially fractions. Listen, I can remember years and years and years. I mean, I'm talking decades and decades ago, learning fractions for the first time. Everybody, fractions get a bad rap. Not many people like fractions in the beginning, and people have 
fraction phobia, and it continues to just go on forever. <laughs> Make peace with fractions. Embrace fractions. Get to know fractions. They're, they're, they're very helpful and necessary in mathematics. All right, so hopefully this video helped you out, and uh, if you like this video in some way, please consider, consider smashing that like button. And uh, also, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. If you like my teaching style, I literally have hundreds of hundreds of uh, math videos on my channel organized in various playlists. Um, clearly, I love to teach math. You know, there's a lot of things I can't do teaching math. I think I've done a pretty good job, but it's taken me years to kind of find my voice in a particular teaching style. Always try to teach math in a clear and understandable uh, way. Okay. So, but if you want my best help, okay, my best uh, uh, resources, check out the links in the description of this video. All right. With that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.